we're going to get our brain back into this space with something that you guys actually already know how to do, which is to classify different kinds of data. So, <clears throat> I just noticed that my oh, oops, I'm completely disproportionate in size. Um, I, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm pedantic right now. So, that's a little better. Okay. Now, I want you to help me remember, when we think about all the different kinds of data that we work with, we have two big sections that they fall yeah. under. Two really big sections, and then we'll go down a little more finely within them. Can anyone think of the names that refer to these two major different sections? Anyone, anyone just want to give me one? So, analog and digital? <laughs> analog and digital? We're actually, I'll come to the analog and digital. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down, I'm going to file it. Let's come back to that thought. Um, the thing about both analog and digital is that they sort of both refer to things you can do in terms of numbers, right? Like you can have digits and then you can have an analog scale, but it's, it's something to do with numerical data, okay? So I'm gonna put that on our first little oval here, okay? Now, numerical is just one name for this section. There's another name? Does anyone know it starts with a Q? Uh, we'll come to that, we'll come to that. That's Quantitative, very good. Period. Quantitative because it refers to a quantity of some kind. Just pausing for a second because I can hear. Am I the only person who can hear that? I can hear someone's super loud headphones. Or phone that someone forgot to turn off. Actually, it's, it's outside. Is it outside? Okay. Never mind. That's fine. I wasn't sure if it was in the room and quiet or outside and it's super loud. Okay. What was Sophie's word again? Was the right one? Start of the cube was quantitative. Thank you. Okay, very good. So this is the first big section. We'll drill down into it in a second. But there's some data which has nothing to do with numbers. It's non-numerical. Does anyone remember what it's called? It starts with C. Categorical. Categorical. Very close. Pretty close. We'll, we'll come to a couple of people mentioned that word already. Um, can someone give me one? Uh, just cross it out. It's fine. Also, why? You can check what it is. Okay. Now, as promised, I said we're going to drill down into these further. And very conveniently, there's two sort of subsections in numerical data and two in categorical. <laughs> um, and this is where I'm going to come to the chance to words, analog and digital. Right? So within numerical, does anyone remember these words? They're words you've been introduced to already. And one of them has been said multiple times in the room. Yeah. And discrete. Okay, so when we think about like numbers that you can finally count out, right? We call this discrete numerical or discrete quantitative data. Do note it's discrete spell. E-T-E -E at the end, not to be confused with double E-T at the end. Does anyone know what that discrete means? It's a completely different word. Yes. It means, Down shh, line. don't tell anyone. You're quite right. So this discrete means separate. Now, not every single time, but most discrete data comes from a main particular way of getting data, which is counting. So if you're counting up the number of TVs in our household, the number of siblings that a child has, when you're counting these things, you're going 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So you've got separate numbers. Okay. Now this other one is the one that's been said a couple of times when people are grabbing for words. If it's not discrete, if it's not something you can count separate units, it's continuous. Thank you. Now continuous quantitative data doesn't tend to come from counting. Um, it's things like how tall you are or how heavy you are. This doesn't come from counting, it comes from measurement. Measurement, very good. Um, and I should say, usually comes from measuring. One of the tricky things about data and statistics is that there's often exceptions to each different thing, but this is the main places where you get these kinds of data. So, um, here are our two. Again, as promised, there's two subsections of categorical data. Some categorical data you can put in order. You can put it in order from like lowest to highest or best to worst or something like that. And because you can put it in order, it's called, anyone remember? Ordinal. Ordinal data, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Now, I'm going to return to this one in a second, but let's just quickly get the other one. When it's not any kind of order, like uh, what color is your hair, right? Uh, you know, this is not something you can put in a nice name order. 
This one starts with Andy. Do you know what it is? And it's a tricky one. It's fairly common to talk about this word. No, 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 I got it. Justice. He wrote it down. Very good. Okay. Now, um, why don't you quickly dig in this one? Because it's the one that people find uh, often quite confusing. Because it seems like it's sort of both at the same time. If you can put it in order, and sometimes, in fact, these literally have numbers on them, but they aren't numerical data. Let me say that again. Sometimes you get data, it's got numbers in it, but it's not numerical. Let me give you an example. Um, actually, I'll give you a few. Does anyone know what this stands for? Seriously, does anyone know what it stands for? Does anyone know what context it comes from? You might have seen in a movie, it's like, we've been upgraded to DEF CON 2. Like, that's usually the way some um, generals say it. Okay. I'm giving, I'm giving you a sense It's fine, maybe I'm the only kid. Okay, so it stands for Defense Readiness Condition. There's the DEF and there's the CON. Um, it's uh, talking about the state of readiness that the Army, Navy, what's the other one? Air Force. <laughs> Army, Navy, Air Force. How, how ready are they for attack, for defense, all that kind of thing, right? Now, these levels are numbered. Right? DEF CON 1 is the highest. Um, it's like it's like finger on the trigger, we're going to launch the new. That's what DEF CON 1 is. <laughs> and then it goes DEF CON 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? So there are numbers on them. You're going to order these sets of data, but it's not numerical or quantitative, because it's not like if you added DEF CON 1 and DEF CON 2, you get DEF CON 3, like that's not the way the numbers work, they're really just labels. Okay. So there's like levels. Kind of. Actually, that's a good example. In, um, in school, right, level 1, level 2, level 3, they are in order, but they don't operate like in any arithmetic way. They might as well be called level A, B, C, D, or red, green, orange, or something like that. Um, now, I have one other favorite one that I pulled out for you, and I want you to have a quick look at it. And you don't need to see all the pictures. This is the one I... Um, now, I need to zoom in a bit closer so you can see the text is a little bit small. What do you think this has to do with? What it has to do with insects, okay? Uh, insects, okay? Let me zoom in a bit closer. Um, this is my favorite categorical, ordinal category. It's the Schmidt Pain Index, right? And um, you can see why it's ordinal. If I come over here, have a look over here. What do you see up there? What do you see? A lot of just like scale. A scale of pain. That's okay. like that's that's my scale of pain. Uh, depending on like how close you are to APs or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see it's in order, right? From most painful to least painful. But the important thing is that. These don't represent numbers that you can add or subtract or things like that, right? So for example, I'm going to read to you, uh, let me find a, um, let me find a 2, that sounds pretty good. So you can add right? your camera roll. I, I, I downloaded it just for you guys. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, now take it back, I'm just going to do one down the least painful end, okay? Here we go. Um, the red fire ant. That's uh, what is that? 25. Can you guys see 25 on there? No. Where's 25? It's down the bottom. There we go, straight down here. Oh, look at it, it's so cute. It won't let me zoom quite into there. There we go. There he is, 25. Let me read, um, now, the guy who came up with this, Schmidt, right, Justin Schmidt, he's an entomologist. I'm just going to ask him in a second how he got this information. Uh, sharp, sudden, mildly alarming, like walking across a shag carpet and reaching for the light switch. What? That's his description. Yeah, well, what happens when he's been by that? Can you repeat that? Oh, so it's like a no, I'm not going to repeat it. Because yeah. now I'm going to tell you about this guy here in the middle. Okay? Now, um, let me just move a little bit so you can see that. Oh, okay. What's that? These guys in the middle. It's a four. That's a four, right? So this is the most painful. Okay? Now that particular one right in the middle, um, that's the bullet end. Bullet end, let me read you the description. <laughs> It says, thanks everyone, pure, intense, brilliant pain like walking over flaming charcoal with a three inch nail embedded in your heel. Now, how did he come up with these descriptions? 
He allowed himself to be stung by all of them. Okay, and he came up with this index. Okay. Now, what's the point? Well, he needed some way to order these because they clearly come in a hierarchy. But like how one, I read a one and then I read a four. It's not like, oh, if you get bitten four times by this, that's equivalent to that. It's clearly not, it's just a scale that he uses, okay, that he invented. 